Did you know that the very emotions that drive you can also be the ones holding you back? It's true. Our emotional attachments, whether to people, outcomes or possessions, can create a grip so tight it clouds our judgment, limits our freedom and keeps us stuck in patterns that don't serve us. If you want to break free and live a life full of inner freedom, balance and clarity, you need to understand how emotional attachment impacts every decision you make. It's not enough to simply acknowledge your emotions, you need to learn how to detach in a way that strengthens your mental clarity and empowers you to take control of your life. The best part? You can start right now without needing to change everything at once. All it takes is a mindset shift and a few intentional practices that will shift how you respond to life's challenges. Avoid this mistake, holding on to emotions as though they define you. If you want true growth, you need to step back, assess and create space between your reactions and your actions. You don't need to let your emotions rule you. You need to learn how to use them as tools for strength and clarity not as obstacles to overcome. In this video, we'll explore how to break the cycle of emotional attachment, understand the powerful concept of stoic detachment, and ultimately free yourself from the invisible chains that hold you back. If you're ready to step into a life of deeper control and self-mastery, keep watching. You'll discover how to separate emotion from logic, set healthier boundaries, and find peace amid chaos. Ready? Let's dive in. Number one, the grip of emotional attachment. There's a certain comfort in the things we love, whether it's a favorite TV show, a piece of clothing, or perhaps the people we hold close, emotional attachment seems to give life a deeper meaning. It's almost like our heartstrings are tied to these objects or people, and with each tug, we feel a connection that's hard to break. Think about it, you've probably held on to something for years simply because of how it makes you feel. You may even have a memento from the past, whether it's a gift from a loved one or something that reminds you of a more carefree time. There's joy in these attachments, right? But as much as we can smile thinking about these cherished connections, there's a reality that often lurks behind this happiness. Emotional attachment can also have a dark side. It's a feeling that can bind us to the point of distraction, vulnerability and even pain. Have you ever felt that gnawing sensation in your chest when you're apart from someone or something you've grown to attach to? Suddenly, the joy of those memories feels clouded by the anxiety of needing them. You want to move forward but the weight of that attachment keeps you rooted in the past, holding on to something you might need to let go of. It's this tension between joy and restraint that brings us to a pivotal question. Can we truly experience peace and emotional freedom if we remain so connected to everything around us? The answer, surprisingly, lies in a process that seems counterintuitive at first, detachment. We hear the word and think it sounds cold or heartless. But what if detachment isn't about pushing away the things we care about? What if it's about creating space for ourselves to breathe, grow and truly live without the constant tug of war with our emotions? As we dive deeper into this idea of detachment, we'll explore not just how to break free from the hold of unhealthy emotional attachments, but also how to cultivate the wisdom that comes from understanding the delicate balance between caring and letting go. Let's face it, the world isn't always going to align with our desires, and that's where Stoic philosophy can offer powerful insights. The Stoics, men like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca, understood this struggle more intimately than most of us. They didn't preach detachment as a way to numb ourselves to the world's beauty, but rather as a way to appreciate everything we love without becoming enslaved by it. Imagine for a moment how much more peaceful you could be if you could enjoy your favorite things, relationships and experiences without the gnawing fear of losing them. 
How much less anxiety would you carry with you every day if your emotional attachment didn't define your happiness? It's natural to be drawn to the things and people we value, but recognizing the grip of emotional attachment in our lives opens up a profound path towards emotional freedom. And that path doesn't mean cutting yourself off from the world, it means learning how to engage with it in a healthier, more balanced way. Number two, understanding stoic detachment, separating emotion from logic. It's one thing to hear the word detachment, but it's another to really understand what it means, especially when we're so deeply embedded in our emotions. Think back to a moment in your life when emotions completely took over. Maybe it was a breakup, a tough job situation, or even something as simple as a frustrating argument with a friend or family member. In those moments, emotions can feel all-consuming. You can't think clearly, your mind races, and it's almost like your emotions have taken the wheel of your life. You've been there, right? It's a feeling that's not only overwhelming, but often it can feel like you're on autopilot, reacting instead of responding. What if I told you that you didn't have to live that way? The Stoics believed that emotions, while natural, shouldn't control your life. They understood that emotions arise as a natural part of being human, but they also knew that we have the power to choose how we respond to those emotions. The key here is detachment not in the sense of not caring, but in stepping back and gaining perspective. Detachment isn't about ignoring your feelings, it's about not letting them cloud your judgment and decision-making. Take a moment to reflect on the last time you were caught up in an emotional whirlwind. Maybe it was a stress-filled week, or you received bad news. In the heat of the moment, emotions run high, and it can be hard to think rationally. The Stoic mindset encourages us to recognize when emotions begin to take control and to find ways to detach ourselves from their immediate impact. This means creating space between the stimulus, the event or situation, and our response, how we react. The key is recognizing that emotions are temporary and in that brief window, we have the ability to choose our response, not simply react. The Stoic philosophers like Epictetus often taught that our emotions are reactions to our judgments about external events, and those judgments are often colored by our attachment to specific outcomes. For example, if you expect a certain result in a situation and it doesn't go as planned, the disappointment you feel is often based on your attachment to that expectation. But what if you could practice detachment in a way that allows you to accept situations for what they are without clinging to how you want them to unfold? This doesn't mean you become cold or indifferent. Rather, it means you allow yourself the freedom to experience life without the burden of attachment. Imagine the freedom you could feel if you let go of the need to control every outcome, to define your happiness by the success of your goals or to tie your identity to how others perceive you? What if you allowed life to unfold as it will and practiced accepting whatever comes your way, knowing that you are still in control of your response? Number three, creating space. The power of stepping back. Think about the last time you were overwhelmed. Maybe you had a hundred things to do and felt like everything was piling up. Your phone buzzed with messages, the work was piling on, and the world seemed to be moving faster than you could keep up with. The pressure starts to build, and before long, you feel like you're drowning in a sea of tasks, deadlines and expectations. It's exhausting, right? There's an almost constant pressure to keep pushing forward, to keep achieving, and to keep responding to life's demands. But what if the solution to this overwhelm wasn't to work harder, faster or longer? What if, instead of pushing harder, the answer was simply to step back and create space? Stepping back isn't about quitting, ignoring responsibilities or retreating from life's challenges. It's about recognizing when the pressure is too much and giving yourself the space to breathe, reflect and realign your priorities. In the fast-paced world we live in, 
it's easy to feel like we have to keep pushing ourselves to the edge. But the Stoics, again, offer us wisdom in this regard. Marcus Aurelius, in his writings, often speaks about the importance of creating moments of pause. He recognized that without stepping back from the chaos of the world, we risk losing sight of what truly matters. Imagine how often you rush through the day, ticking off tasks without taking a moment to assess whether you're moving in the right direction. When we step back, we allow ourselves the space to ask, what am I doing this for? Why is this so important to me? Is this how I truly want to be spending my time? Taking a step back gives us clarity. It allows us to see the bigger picture. Think about the moments in your life when you've stepped away from a situation, a difficult conversation, an overwhelming project, and in that pause, you found a new perspective. Maybe you realize that a certain issue wasn't as urgent as it seemed, or perhaps you gained insight into a better approach. By creating space, you step out of the whirlwind and gain a bird's eye view of your life. Stepping back is a powerful tool for anyone feeling overwhelmed, stressed, or emotionally drained. Number four, the rational path. Weighing the impact of distancing. We all know that feeling when we're stuck in a tough situation. The anxiety rises, the emotions take over, and suddenly our judgment is clouded. But have you ever stopped to think about how much of our emotional turmoil stems from our attachment to the situation itself? In the heat of the moment, we often fail to recognize that the way we respond to stress, the people around us, or the events unfolding, can all be influenced by how deeply we are emotionally tied to them. It's a natural part of being human to form connections, but there's a crucial point at which our attachment crosses over from a healthy bond to something that holds us back. Take a step back though, and you might realize that stepping away from a situation or person can be one of the most rational and effective choices you can make. Think about a time when you distanced yourself from something or someone. Initially, it might have felt uncomfortable, like you were walking away from something valuable or important. But as time went on, you might have noticed that the emotional weight started to lift. Your ability to think more clearly returned, and you were able to see the situation from a broader, more objective perspective. This is where the rational path of stoic detachment comes into play, when you are too emotionally attached to something, it becomes increasingly difficult to make rational decisions. Your judgment is clouded by the emotions tied to the outcome, making it hard to think critically. The Stoics recognized this danger. They knew that in order to navigate the challenges of life with wisdom, one must learn to step back, detach emotionally, and evaluate situations based on reason, not impulse. Marcus Aurelius, a prime example of Stoic thought, often reflected on the importance of acting with reason rather than allowing oneself to be carried away by unchecked emotions. For him, detachment wasn't about being cold or indifferent, it was about recognizing that emotions are fleeting, but our decisions can have long-lasting consequences. Think about it for a moment. When was the last time you made a major decision when you were emotionally charged? Was the outcome truly in your best interest, or was it driven by your feelings at the time? In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get swept up in the emotional currents of life. Whether it's a stressful job, a complicated relationship, or even just daily irritations, emotions can make it hard to see things clearly. But imagine a life where you make decisions based on logic, on long-term benefits, and on what's truly in alignment with your values, not just what feels right in the moment. Weighing the impact of distancing yourself from emotionally charged situations allows you to think more clearly and act with greater wisdom. It's about being able to separate yourself from the immediate emotional response and instead take the time to think critically about what's best for your long-term well-being. Stepping back doesn't mean avoiding the issue. 
It means removing yourself from the emotional frenzy so that you can come back to it with a level head. This is the path to real empowerment. By recognizing when and how to distance yourself, you gain the ability to see the big picture, avoid rash decisions, and ultimately make choices that align with your greater purpose. This is the true essence of stoic detachment, not avoidance, but clarity. Number five, seeking clarity through trusted connections. In today's world, it's easy to feel isolated. Between the pressures of work, the demands of family, and the constant influx of information online, it can feel like you're alone in dealing with life's challenges. But if you take a moment to reflect, you may realize that some of the most important insights you've ever gained came from the people you trust most. Think back to a time when you were feeling lost or uncertain and you reached out to someone who understood. Their perspective, their support, and even their challenge to your assumptions gave you the clarity you needed to move forward. That's the power of connection. While it's important to practice detachment from unhealthy emotional attachments, this doesn't mean you should isolate yourself. Humans are social beings, and the connections we form with others can be some of the most valuable sources of clarity and perspective. The Stoics themselves valued the role of trusted friends and mentors in their lives. Seneca, for example, often emphasized the importance of surrounding oneself with wise individuals who could offer guidance in times of uncertainty. These connections serve as sounding boards, providing a different perspective and helping us see things we might miss on our own. But here's the thing, not all connections are equal. In the age of social media, it's easier than ever to connect with a large number of people, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're gaining clarity. In fact, the opposite is often true. The sheer volume of voices, opinions and distractions can overwhelm us, making it harder to discern what truly matters. This is where the quality of your connections becomes crucial. It's not about how many people you know, but how deeply you trust and rely on a select few who offer wisdom, support, and clarity. Take a moment to reflect who in your life offers you clarity. Who can you turn to when you're in need of perspective? These are the people who can help you see beyond your immediate emotional reactions. They can remind you of your values, your long-term goals, and what truly matters in the grand scheme of things. They're the ones who can help you detach from the noise and refocus on what's important. As you seek clarity, it's essential to cultivate relationships that nourish your soul, challenge your thinking, and help you grow. This is where true detachment comes into play, learning to distance yourself from the distractions and emotional chaos of life, while also nurturing the relationships that bring you closer to your true self. In a world that can often feel overwhelming, seeking clarity through trusted connections is a powerful tool. These relationships help you see the forest for the trees, guiding you toward better decisions and a deeper understanding of who you are and what you want. So the next time you're faced with uncertainty, ask yourself, who can I turn to for the clarity I need? Number six, mastering emotions, setting boundaries for feelings. When was the last time you felt completely overwhelmed by your emotions? Maybe it was a stressful day at work, or perhaps a situation in your personal life took a sudden turn. Emotions, like waves, can crash over us unexpectedly. But what if you could learn to set boundaries for your feelings, much like you set boundaries with people or work? What if you could gain mastery over your emotions, instead of letting them dictate your actions? Mastering your emotions doesn't mean suppressing them, it means learning to navigate them with awareness, control, and intentionality. In fact, the Stoics were pioneers in this area. They believed that while we can't control the initial emotional response, we do have the power to choose how we respond. They emphasized the importance of setting boundaries with our emotions, recognizing when they arise, and taking a step back to assess whether our reactions are based on reason or impulsive feelings. 
Take, for instance, a situation where someone cuts you off in traffic. The initial reaction is usually anger or frustration. Your body tenses, your heart rate rises, and the desire to react is almost overwhelming. But what if, in that moment, you could recognize your anger as just an emotion, one that doesn't necessarily need to control your behavior? What if you could set a boundary with that anger, acknowledging it, but deciding not to let it control your actions? The Stoics would argue that this is exactly what we should aim for emotional awareness and self-control. It's important to note that this process isn't easy. Emotions are powerful, and they can sometimes feel like they're in the driver's seat. But the more you practice setting boundaries with your emotions, the easier it becomes to remain in control. The key is understanding that emotions are natural, but they are not who you are. You are not your anger, your fear, or your sadness. You are the person who chooses how to respond to those emotions. Setting emotional boundaries means that you can acknowledge your feelings, but also take a step back and decide if they are guiding you toward wise action or reactive behavior. When you begin to master your emotions, you'll notice a shift in how you navigate life. You'll feel more grounded, more centered, and more in control. And in doing so, you'll find that your emotional responses become less about impulsive reactions and more about intentional choices that align with your values. Number seven. Reflecting on consequences, lessons from the past and future. We've all been there, standing at the crossroads of a decision, feeling the weight of the moment pressing down on us. Whether it's a career choice, a relationship decision, or something as seemingly simple as how we react to a situation, the consequences of our choices can often feel overwhelming. But how often do we truly reflect on those consequences, both past and future, before we act? What if we could harness the power of reflection to make wiser decisions and live a life of greater purpose? Reflection is one of the most powerful tools we have at our disposal. It allows us to examine past experiences and decisions, learn from them, and apply those lessons to our future choices. But it's not just about looking back. It's also about looking ahead. It's about considering the potential consequences of our actions before we make them, understanding that every choice we make today will shape the reality of tomorrow. The Stoics were masters at reflecting on consequences, they understood that the present moment is always influenced by the past, and the future is shaped by the actions we take today. Marcus Aurelius, for example, would often reflect on his own thoughts and actions, asking himself if they were in alignment with his values and if they would lead to the best possible outcomes. This kind of reflection isn't just about feeling guilty for past mistakes, nor is it about making ourselves anxious about the future. It's about gaining clarity, wisdom, and direction. When we reflect on the past, we have the opportunity to learn from our mistakes. Think back to a time when a decision didn't go as planned. Perhaps it was a career choice that didn't pan out, a relationship that ended in heartache, or even a simple decision that led to unexpected consequences. Initially, the aftermath might have felt discouraging maybe even regretful. But what if you viewed those moments differently? What if instead of simply labeling them as failures, you recognized them as learning experiences, opportunities for growth? Reflection allows us to step outside of the immediate emotional reaction to our choices and see the broader picture. We can ask ourselves, what led to this outcome? What did I learn from this? What would I do differently next time? By examining the lessons from the past, we can gain insights that will guide our future decisions and prevent us from repeating the same mistakes. But reflection isn't just about looking backward, it's also about looking forward. It's about anticipating the potential consequences of our actions before we take them. We all have a tendency to get swept up in the moment, to act impulsively or out of emotion, without considering the long-term effects. How many times have we acted in haste, 
and later regretted it. Whether it's saying something we didn't mean, making a rash decision, or jumping into something without fully considering the impact, the consequences often don't hit us until much later. Number 8. Breaking free from digital distractions. In today's world, distractions are everywhere. Whether it's the constant notifications on your phone, the endless stream of social media posts, or the overwhelming amount of information available at our fingertips, it's easy to get caught up in the digital noise. But have you ever stopped to consider how these distractions are affecting your ability to focus, think deeply, and live a meaningful life? When we live in a world of constant distractions, it becomes increasingly difficult to stay present and connected to what truly matters. The more we indulge in the quick dopamine hits of digital content, the more we lose sight of the deeper, more meaningful aspects of our lives. We become conditioned to crave instant gratification, and as a result, we lose our ability to focus on long-term goals and projects. This can lead to feelings of anxiety, dissatisfaction, and a sense of being lost in the chaos of the digital world. The Stoics, on the other hand, were masters of focus and self-discipline. They understood the importance of controlling distractions and cultivating inner calm. Seneca, for example, warned against the dangers of mindlessly following the crowd and getting swept up in the distractions of the world. He believed that true freedom and clarity come from the ability to detach from the external noise and focus on what truly matters. Breaking free from digital distractions requires intentional effort. It's about setting boundaries around your use of technology and reclaiming your time and attention. Start by identifying the areas of your life where distractions are most prevalent. Is it social media? constant email checking, binge-watching videos. Once you've identified your distractions, take action to limit them. Set specific times for checking your phone or email and stick to them. Turn off non-essential notifications and create time for deep work, reflection and real-life connection. The goal is not to completely eliminate technology from your life, but to use it intentionally Technology can be a powerful tool, but when used mindlessly, it becomes a trap that robs us of our time, focus and peace of mind. By breaking free from digital distractions, you can reclaim your ability to think deeply, focus on your goals and live a life of greater intention. Number 9. Nourishing the Self – Focusing on Fundamental Needs In the rush of daily life, it's easy to forget the basics. We get caught up in chasing success, meeting others' expectations, or striving for more, only to find that our physical, emotional, and mental well-being is suffering. But what if the key to true fulfillment isn't found in external achievements or accolades, but in nourishing the self? To live a life of balance and freedom, it's essential to focus on our fundamental needs, our physical health, emotional well-being, and mental clarity. These are the foundations upon which everything else is built. Without taking care of these needs, we can't hope to succeed in our other pursuits, no matter how hard we try. The Stoics understood the importance of maintaining a balanced life. They believed that by cultivating good habits and taking care of the body, mind and spirit, we could create the foundation for a life of virtue and purpose. For example, Epictetus often spoke about the importance of self-care, not as an indulgence but as a necessary part of living a virtuous life. He understood that if we neglect our health, our emotions, or our mental well-being, we will not be able to perform at our best or make decisions that align with our values. Nourishing the self begins with taking care of the body. Regular exercise, proper nutrition, and sufficient rest are essential for maintaining physical health. But it's not just about the body, it's about the mind and emotions as well. Mental clarity and emotional resilience come from creating time for self-reflection, managing stress, and practicing mindfulness. These practices help you stay grounded and connected to your true self. 
allowing you to make choices that are aligned with your long-term goals. As you focus on nourishing the self, remember that self-care isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. Just as a plant needs sunlight, water and nourishment to thrive, so do you. When you take care of your fundamental needs, you create the foundation for a life of meaning, purpose and fulfillment. Number 10. Living a life of inner freedom and balance. At this stage, you've gained the tools and insights to live a more balanced and intentional life. By practicing stoic detachment, reflecting on consequences, breaking free from distractions and nourishing the self, you are well on your way to living with inner freedom. But what does that really mean, living a life of inner freedom and balance? True freedom doesn't come from external circumstances, it comes from within. It comes from the ability to control your emotions, make decisions based on reason, and live in alignment with your values. Inner freedom is about creating a life where you are not at the mercy of external events, but instead where you are the master of your own mind and actions. Balance is also key. In a world that constantly pushes us to do more, be more and achieve more, balance is the foundation that keeps us grounded. It's about prioritizing what truly matters. Your health, your relationships, your personal growth and letting go of the rest. When you live with balance, you are able to enjoy each moment, appreciate what you have and create a life of peace and fulfillment. As you move forward on your journey, remember that inner freedom and balance are not destinations, they are ongoing practices. They require constant attention, reflection and intentional effort. But with each step, you'll find yourself growing stronger, wiser and more aligned with the life you want to create. If you've made it this far, you've already taken a significant step toward mastering the art of emotional detachment. You've learned how to create space for yourself, break free from distractions and reflect on your past and future to make more informed choices. The journey to inner freedom and balance isn't an overnight transformation. It's a consistent practice. But the best part is you now have the tools to move forward with clarity, making decisions that align with your true self, not just your impulses. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far, showing you're part of the 0.01% who finish what they start. If you're truly serious about living a life of greater control, emotional intelligence and balance, make sure to subscribe to our channel. By joining this community, you'll continue to unlock new insights and together we'll keep striving for a life of growth and true freedom. You've already started this journey. Let's keep building it together.